Hello guys, William Agnew here, Dean and Director at Cellular Repair School, and I want to welcome you guys to another training. What we're going to be talking about today is something that's very, very important to your repair process. And many people have been burned because they don't have this in their repair process, and it's called pre and post checklist. Very important and essential to the success of your business. Why is that? Because when you're working on a customer's device or any device for that matter, what you should always know is what is a pre-existing condition on that device. It's what we refer to it as in the industry is a pre-existing issue. All right. And many times I'll tell you so many times I'll talk to students and they'll ask me a question in terms of a repair and they'll say, well, um, I was doing this repair. I was doing a glass replacement or a digitized replacement. I put everything back together and this particular part of the phone now does not work. And the first thing I'll ask is, well, did you check that before you started the repair? And so many times you'll be, you'll probably be surprised or maybe not. They'll say, no, I didn't. I failed to check it. And in that instance, you cannot honestly say whether it was something that was pre-existing or something you caused. And it's essential that you know, because at this point you need to know whether, you know, it's something that you're liable for or not. So you cover yourself as a technician and a business. So pre and post checklists are very, very important. So how do we, how do we implement pre and post checklists into our process? Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is every time you do a repair on a device you've never worked on before, you just start by doing the very simple checks. And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you guys an example of this on an iPad mini. And what you do is you document as you go. So you create a live living document of what we call SOP, standard operating procedures for pre checklist on each individual device. And that's going to be a living document. It's going to continue uh, to be added to because you're always going to be doing different devices. And that way, when you come to a device that you've never done before, or you hire a new technician who needs to understand what the pre checklist is, now all you do is give him the documentation that already has the pre checklist uh, verified and done. It's that simple. It's that easy. So again, what we're going to show you guys today is an example of that. Now in the process of doing your checklist, what you should always do is document those steps in your work order. That way you know, and you verify that each step has been checked in that particular work order. All right. It's very important, very essential because you will have situations where your customers will come to you and say, Hey, this wasn't an issue. And what you do is you know that it was. Now, with that being said, what you guys should always be doing is once you find an issue in your pre-check list, you should always make it a point to contact and let your, um, your, your customer know that that is an issue before you do any work on it. All right. Always call them and say, Hey, just wanted you to know, just wanted to update you guys that you have a issue with your earpiece speaker or you have an issue with your microphone that's pre-existing we haven't done any repairs on it and that is an issue all right because they may honestly not be aware of the pre-existing issue so that's another thing having a pre a checklist does it allows you to understand what the issue is so you can contact the customer and update the customer on what that issue is before you even start working on the phone and then they can make a decision as to whether it's something that they want to allow you to fix or not do the repair at all so it's totally up to you all right again this is William Agnew guys if you haven't implemented pre and post checklist into your process please please I beg you go do that right now or start documenting that right now and creating your SOPs, your standard operating procedures for pre and post checklist. Now, we're going to move into showing you guys an example on the iPad mini of exactly what a pre checklist looks like. This is William Agnew and I'll see you guys in future trainings. Okay, people, the first thing we want to do is make the check on the device. <clears throat> the first thing we want to check is the home button and the power flex. Make sure it's working fine. We want to do three time and check is every button is work. How you can see here is it's working fine. The next thing we want to do is check the digitizer. It's working. You can see it's work every spot. And the next is the volume button is turn up turn down and the lock the next thing we want to do is the cam we can see it's working and the mic 
we want to check either. Test, 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 test. So make sure it's working. Test, 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 test. You can hear it's working fine. Test, 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 test. Next thing we want to do is check the Wi Fi. It's working fine. You can see here it's working. Let me turn on the airplane mode. You can see the Wi Fi is working fine. Now, other thing we want to do is text the headphone jack. It's working. You can do it with the same video you use for test the cam and test the mic and see it's working. You can hear everything. Now it's time to start the repair. <laughs> 